Her training starts when the uh, chick is still in the egg, but as soon as they punch a hole, they start communicating with the parent. They use what's called a brood call. So we play a recording of that brood call to them, and we also play a sound of our engine noise, trying to get used to that whole sound. Once hatched, imprinting continues, but in stealth mode. These birds are isolation reared, so anybody who goes near the birds any time has to wear a big baggy costume. They have to carry a puppet. It kind of looks like a whooping crane, but our real motivation is to actually uh, disguise the human form. Two weeks in, and the young whoopers will follow their puppet mother anywhere. In this case, inches from the spinning prop of an aircraft. He's used to the aircraft, used to the noise. And they're running and they're, they're holding their little wings out. You know, they have no idea what those wings are for, but they're holding them out because instinct tells them to do it. it must be a, such a revelation for them, you know? <laughs> they had an epiphany and all of a sudden they got off the ground. It must be incredible. By the time autumn blows in, the four and a half month old puppet reared whooping cranes are almost full grown. Their wings, close to seven feet wide and strong enough to reach speeds of 45 miles per hour, will take them on their first 1,200 mile migration from Wisconsin to Florida's Panhandle. Wild birds could probably do it in anywhere from three to seven days, but with the ultralights, it takes them sometimes up to 60 something days. But it's not the limitation of the birds, it's the limitation of the ultralights on how far they can fly each day. And there's no limitation to the joy the whoopers bring to the rabid craniacs on this cool December morning. The weather's good, the winds are low, and the birds are coming. The exact date they land is always up in the air, but it's a safe bet that they'll be landing mid-December. I've had two special days in my life. The first day was when I got married, and the second was seeing those young whooping cranes come into St. Mark's, and it just brings tears to my eyes. It's amazing. There is just something about these birds that, you know, goes right to the heart. Come spring, these whoopers will get the itch to return to Wisconsin. They'll just take off. There's no bags to pack. There's no goodbyes. And there's no mother ultralight. They're on their own to make it back and to teach their future brood. If we're lucky, they come right back to where we introduce them. That's what you call success.